glad you could join us today. Welcome to Calvary Temple. Hope you enjoy the message and um, have fun at home online. Yeah.
Good morning, church. If you don't know who I am, my name is Michael. I'm the pastor here at Calvary Temple, and we are going to continue our series called Cabin Fever. So in Manitoba right now, things are changing. Some of the restrictions are about to be lifted, and uh, there will be some changes happening, maybe even to how we're meeting right now. Um, but it's one of those situations where we don't want to make any promises that we can't keep so we'll keep you posted and um, as things change things progress and we make uh, plans for how to get people back together in groups or uh, how to even make this a better experience for you we will keep you posted so bear with us and we thank you for your patience as we are learning how to grow together as a spiritual community in a time like this so last week we started a new teaching series called Cabin Fever. Who will you be on the other side of lockdown? We're going to continue that series today and we're going to be looking at one of the most dangerous mindsets that you can fall into. It creates a lot of fruit in your life. Um, it creates enemies out of friends, breeds depression, creates anxiety, stress, tension, and constantly reminds you that you aren't good enough. We're talking about comparison. Our ability to compare ourselves constantly with the world around us and other people. Luckily, the Bible says a lot about the topic. So we've got some good direction to head into. Last week we were talking about 2 Corinthians, we were talking about the Apostle Paul and a lot that he had to overcome. Now he struggled with many types of mental demons in his life, many of which we're still struggling with today. And so last week we talked about anxiety and as we go into tackling the concept of comparison today, you'll probably see a lot of similarities 
and see that they work together, but we can overcome these things, especially in a time where we've got a little bit of extra leeway, we've got a little bit of extra study time, we've got a little bit of extra home worship time. We're gonna tackle these things and we're gonna come out of this lockdown scenario better off and more effective for the kingdom of God. Amen? I'm pretending you just said amen. So thank you, raise the roof, it's awesome. Paul, when talking with the Second Corinthian church, he really had his hands full. And in Second Corinthians 10, he, he comes out with these questions of like, who, who are you comparing yourself against? And so I want to ask you that today. Is it your brother, your sister, maybe an actor, a co-worker, an Instagram personality or influence, or maybe even your past self? Who are you comparing yourself with today? This is a church in 2 Corinthians that knew a lot about comparison, knew a lot about competition, and they came by it naturally because it's part of our human nature. And so with Paul, while dealing with all of the stuff with the super apostles being compared against him, and people would say, oh, they're better preachers than you, Paul. They're more handsome than you, Paul. They have better leather jackets than you, Paul. That's probably not in the Bible. But they would come up with all these things about why they're so much better. And he'd be like, no, it doesn't matter. It's about Jesus. It's about the mission of the church. It doesn't matter all of these things that you think it's about. It's all style. What really matters is the substance. So Paul has to constantly remind these guys. And while he was doing that, while he was actually in Corinth working with this church, he wrote another letter. And he wrote this letter to the church in Rome. It's not a church that was too far removed from the church in Corinth. There's a lot of similarities. And so he sneaks in this letter to the church in Rome, and it was a very long letter. And it makes up the book called Romans. Uh, many consider it an epistle, not a letter. But he writes this letter, and inside that letter, he writes... Oh, I don't know if this Bible has Romans. Oh, there it is. Inside this letter... That's a preacher joke. Inside this letter, he writes this. Are we ready for our, our main verse of the day? And this is going to be really familiar for a lot of you guys. Therefore, Romans 12, I urge you, brothers, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. So essentially he's saying, do everything you can. Your existence is now for God. Offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Your spiritual act of worship is getting behind mission, pushing forward what is pleasing to God. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. That is a, a huge chunk of scripture. It is only a couple of verses long, but man, is it powerful. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. The one translation uses the word age, and the, the, the term age is actually referring to a generation or a world system. I was often taught growing up that this verse meant don't go to movie theaters and don't listen to non-Christian music. It has nothing to do with that. Sorry. First century Rome had a god. They had a god. His name was Caesar. And Caesar's patterns, Caesar's ideas were to conform to his will, to conform to his plans, to conform to his mindsets in order to be successful. When Paul comes at this and says, hey, 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 don't conform any longer to the patterns of this world, he's saying don't conform to that stuff. The need to, to be successful, the need, the need to push yourself and push yourself and push yourself and compare yourself against other people just to drive yourself forward. Paul's saying, stop, pump the brakes. Let's take another look at life. Don't pattern yourself like that. Pattern yourself after Christ. 
that's what's going to get you somewhere. So the, the conformity facing this church and this culture echoes ours. And it really breeds the question of what's my purpose then? What's the mission? What about me? What about the church? Because Rome was built on the same comparisons that we're finding ourselves in today. Not conforming is discerning what God's will is for your life. Not picking up someone else's broken dreams. Battling comparison is huge to finding peace in your life. Because winning means you've unlocked a secret from heaven. One of those in heaven as on earth moments. We want to know what heaven says about our lives, what God says about our lives, not what the people around us have to say about our lives. Definitely not what culture has to say. So here's three things about comparisons we're going to talk about today. Three quick things. And these will help start building a healthier you coming out of this lockdown world. And as the, the door starts to open a little bit more each day and you get a little bit more of what we think is freedom back, life is going to change. Things are never going to quite be the same the way they were before. But we have the ability to look at our attitudes, to look at our hearts, and be more focused on Christ than ever before. Point number one, everyone is a magician. What we post is usually scripted. I, I'm going to show you a couple of things from my Instagram, heaven forbid. The first one is this. It is a picture of my cat Pepper watching Barbie. Um, is this scripted? I didn't script it, but I'm pretty sure my daughter placed the iPad there. And my, my cat actually watched it. The next one is a picture of my staged home. Oh, you think we have such a beautiful home that we, like, why would you not want to live there? Well, it was professionally staged to look like that. Not my coffee table. Not my picture of a scruffy-haired cow. Usually there's books everywhere. And, um... Normal life mess. The next one, I, I had posted this, and I, I wrote the caption, did some hoarding today. I, I will find solutions for no toilet paper, but no coffee? Really? Yeah, so I posted the pictures of the coffee that I hoarded um, after I told everyone else not to be a hoarder. Uh, I was going into this lockdown mode, and um, yeah, here's the thing. We... We think we're coffee snobs, and so we buy good coffee. But always, always hiding in the pantry, out of view of the camera, out of view of Instagram, is a can of Folgers for when we run out of the good stuff. It's always there. Everything in life is scripted. Ten years ago, nobody knew what the term insta-influencer actually was. Now, without realizing it, when you scroll through your Instagram, your friends, my friends, are Instagram influencers. These are people who are paid to sell you things on Instagram through the relationships that you've already created. I never realized this was a thing until I was hanging out one day in uh, somewhere in Europe and I was with my friend and his wife and they were taking pictures on a bridge and making sure that her watch was perfectly in view of every shot. I'm like, why? He's like, oh no, she makes good money showing off that watch. Here this whole time, I thought everything was supernatural on social media. Not supernatural, but like super duper natural. I thought, I thought nobody was lying to me. No one was trying to sell me things. And now I've come to realize that everything around me is trying to sell me something. When you go in a store, the colors you see, the smell, the lighting, the music, it's all sales. Telling you that you need things, that you essentially aren't good enough the way you are. 
So realize that when you start comparing yourself against other people that you see around you, you probably aren't comparing yourself against reality. You're doing better than you think you are. Second thing is this, not everything is for you and that's okay. People are born in different places in life with different connections, with different families, with different abilities. Do your best. Don't measure yourself against someone else's worst. If you try hard enough, you can be whatever you want. I've heard this a million times. And as a youth pastor many years ago, I remember hearing one of the interns teach this to the, the youth one day. And I came in the next week and was like, here's the thing, guys. Um, you cannot be anything you want to be in life. That's not real. And I'm sure I burst everyone's bubble that day, but I'm not going to be an astronaut. I'm a little anti-heights. I'm not going to be a bullfighter. I have a bleeding disorder. I'm also not going to be the front man for Leonard Skinner. I don't live in Alabama. You see, you can admire and learn from people without comparing and measuring your value against their value. Which brings us to my last point for the morning, and that's this. That we need to have browner browns and greener greens in our lives. The grass is greener on the other side. Another super duper famous expression, the grass is greener on the other side. When we lived in Alberta, our house there had this lawn that was absolutely horrible to get to not to be brown. It's like the sun came over the deck at just the right angle and there was always this brown spot. Like, I put so much fertilizer on that thing. I dug up. I put grass seed in. I watered it beyond recognition. I could never get it right. And I just got frustrated and thought, you know what? It's never going to be good grass. It's horrible. Then when we moved to Warman, where I live for the next couple of weeks, um, I looked at the grass and I was like, okay, People who had this house before did a terrible job with this grass. I'm not going to make the same mistakes. So I went down to a couple of the different local shops and I was like, hey, so tell me about the soil. What nutrients do you know of that are missing from our soil here that's going to make me grow better grass? And they're like, oh, that's amazing questions. Well, you know, this company does this, this company does this. But what they're lacking is, I think it was potassium. I was like, oh, it's amazing. So, you know, with that combined with, I was talking with a farmer friend and he hooked me up with a bucket of straight nitrogen. So I just went all in with the grass seed, all in with the nitrogen, and then um, it started raining. And all of a sudden, poof, we've got this amazing lawn. It's the fact that I researched the soil type. I figured out what nutrients were missing. I figured out a water schedule that would work that made the grass grow. A lot of times in life, our grass is brown or not the right color of green that we want it to be because we're not doing the work. We're not watering where we are. We're not fertilizing where we are. We aren't putting the right seed in where we are. A few years back, we planted a church in Alberta. And, you know, this as a church plant, it was, um, it was tough to get off the ground. And, you know, you'd have the fluctuations in attendance. One week, you'd have 100 people in the room. The next week, you'd have 15. And you'd be like, what did we do wrong? And we kind of leveled out around the 60 range. But... When you look at the numbers and people would come by and be like, this church is amazing. Like, why isn't there more people? Like, I don't know. Well, you have this going for you and this going for you. You've done so much to the community. Why, why, why aren't you at like at 500 by now? It's like, I don't know. Here's the thing though. That was the healthiest church I've ever pastored. 
it was the best time I've ever had in my ministry career or even personal life. We loved what we did. We saw a real drastic change in our community. But I let people judge my grass versus theirs. And what they thought was the right color, because it's what the right color of their grass was in their church, they judged that against mine. And it really got to me. They're like, I don't know. I don't know why there's more or why this hasn't happened or where's the revival or I, I, I just don't understand. But it was exactly what God wanted it to be because we were invested, we watered that soil, we put the right seed in that soil, and we loved it. When we go to church, when we, when we are there, when we are invested, when, when we actually truly love what's happening around us, we love the mission of Christ, it reflects in our attitudes. And we have this ability to see change happening in front of us and see growth happening in front of us. When we look at it and are constantly saying, it's not good enough. Why, why aren't people coming to hear about Jesus? Why, why don't more people want to know what's happening in our church? Calm down and start watering your life where you're at. Start pouring into the church, finding ways to see growth happen. Don't compare yourself into a hole looking for perfect grass. Instead, look for perfect grass seed. Work at knowing that God has called you to be you where you are and grow with it. Sometimes it means that you're going to have to do a little bit of work and grow in difficult soil. That's okay. I want to leave you with this thought. You don't need to compare yourself against anything or anyone. Christ in you is enough. God has created you to be something special. Who you are is enough. We are taking time to work on who we are, not to recreate or to change to the degree that you're not you, but to make us the best we that we possibly can be for God's kingdom. So I just want to encourage you today to take who you are, refine it, push it against the word of God and figure out how can you be more Christ-like. And you will find more peace, more contentment as you find that you are not comparing yourself against things that don't matter. I've been told for years in my life, just like you have, to be more this, to be more that. Well, a, a pastor can't be like that. You, you, can't, you can't listen to this or, or think like that or, or go and hang out with these friends. Be you. But make sure that you're becoming more like Christ as you go. I'm going to pray for you, and I want to encourage you that if you need prayer this week, please go to the website and uh, let us know. We want to be praying with you. We want to be walking alongside you. Amen? Again, you just said amen, and uh, thank you for that interaction. But Lord God, I thank you for everyone who's watching this, no matter what country, no matter what province, no matter what city they're watching in. I just thank you for them. I just pray, God, that you would bless them, that you would make your face to shine upon them, that they would know what peace truly means this week.
Thank you for joining us at CT Brandon today. If um, you are looking for information on how to get plugged in, all we want you to do is go to the website and fill out the form that's on there. We want to know more about you, where you're viewing from, and uh, how we can become part of your spiritual family just as you are becoming part of ours. So I want to encourage you in that. If you've been giving during this time, I want to say thank you. You are a very generous church. And the fact that we have kept giving through this time shows one thing. We are on mission. We are more excited about seeing people getting saved than anything else. And the reports, the emails that come in about what God is doing in your lives are encouraging so keep sending those keep telling us what god is doing in your life click on the forms whatever you have to do and if you want to be giving today there is information both on ctbrandon.com or you can click on the link above if you're watching through our live.ctbrandon.com portal with all that i want to say thanks for watching and i'm so glad that we get to do this journey again.